birth is an incredible event linked to the reassurance of a crying baby and the successful commencement of air breathing. The transition to air breathing from in utero life is complex and remains poorly understood in humans. Our study aimed to perform the most detailed imaging of the human lung at birth, allowing us to describe this remarkable respiratory process. We imaged healthy term neonates born by elective caesarean section from their very first breaths after birth using electrical impedance tomography or EIT. EIT allows the real-time visualisation of the regional distribution and behaviour of aeration, tidal ventilation and gas flow within the chest. EIT is ideally suited to neonates as it is non-invasive and radiation free. Here the study methods can be seen in a 36 week gestation neonate who did not require any resuscitative interventions at birth. The first breath occurred on delivery of the chest. As the neonate was placed on the resuscitaire, a custom built non-adhesive EIT electrode belt was placed around the chest and imaging immediately commenced. In this case, imaging began at 22 seconds and continued for the first six minutes. EIT data were then correlated to video and audio data and each individual breath extracted and classified as either a cry, grunt or regular tidal breath. EIT data were excluded if the breath could not be conclusively classified or movement artifact occurred. The volume change during two consecutive breaths of regular quiet tidal breathing at approximately five minutes after birth can be seen in the left hand panel. An increase in EIT signal represents increasing lung volume during inspiration and the subsequent decrease in signal the emptying of tidal volume from the lung during expiration. The slope of the volume curve represents relative gas flow within the lungs, with a steeper curve indicating faster flow. The right hand image shows a functional EIT cross sectional image of the volume change within the right and left lung regions during these two breaths. The relative volume is indicated with a colour scale with dark blue used to represent lung volume at functional residual capacity and white, the greatest volume measured during the recording period. Consequently, how gas moves from the central airways through to the distal lung in inspiration, which lung regions do not ventilate and then how ventilated regions empty in expiration can be seen. The breathing pattern and resultant lung volume changes are markedly different when a baby is crying at birth. Here shown in two cries 25 seconds after birth. Inspiration is quicker and volume changes greater in the right lung, which also fills with gas faster than the left. More striking is the behaviour of the lung during expiration. Shortly after expiration begins, there is a cessation of expiratory gas flow and volume loss followed by a brief redistribution of gas towards the ventral lung. The remainder of the expiration then occurs at a slower flow rate. At the end of expiration, lung volume is greater than at the start of the breath, indicating a gain in functional residual capacity. In contrast, during regular tidal ventilation, both the right and left lung fill and empty relatively equally during inspiration and expiration. There is very little change in functional residual capacity between breaths. This is the pattern of ventilation seen in healthy children and adults. We are not aware of the volume pattern seen when a neonate cries at birth occurring during any other type of innate spontaneous breathing. We hypothesize that these are essential to successfully commencing independent air breathing at birth. At birth, the lung must rapidly fill with air to create the functional residual capacity needed to facilitate gas exchange without placental support. This is achieved by generating inspiratory gas flow and intrathoracic pressure great enough to drive fetal lung fluid from the airways and alveoli into the lung interstitium. 
until the interstitium has cleared this fluid, the neonate must defend this newly created functional residual capacity. During expiration, the intrathoracic pressure gradient falls and the alveolar at risk of being flooded with fluid again. Our imaging suggests that neonates prevent this by slowing the contraction of the diaphragm and partially closing the glottis, both of which slow the escape of the gas from the lungs and keep intrathoracic pressure high. The subtle but important movement of gas within the lungs during expiratory braking is something that has only been possible to see with our EIT methods. This represents a type of pendular flow in which the stable aerated lung regions redistribute gas to those alveoli at risk. Once the interstitium has been cleared of fetal lung fluid and stable functional residual capacity established, regular tidal breathing can occur.